Gran Turismo 5 introduced something new to the series at the time, which was premium cars. Basically cars with proper detail and interior view, while every other used car was just ported over from the previous titles. With over 1000 plus cars in this game, only 200 of them were actually premium. So today I want to see if you can beat Gran Turismo 5 with only those cars. Now a lot of the good premium cars you can get are hidden away in the B-Spec mode, so obviously I won't be doing that. I also also won't do any special condition events and ignore the used car dealership entirely. I'll only be using cars purchased from this dealership menu and the ones that I obtained through A spec mode. With all that explained, I hope you enjoy the video. With the start of this run, depending on what version you're playing this game on, it will give you some gifts to start off, such as the GT86 and FT concept, but I decided to not use them. But instead, I had a car in mind that I'm pretty sure my friend Xbus would be happy with. Thank you, Dove. It's about time I introduced to you all what is quite literally a tiny piece of automobile perfection. With a weight lower than a modern Formula 1 car and a balance better than the average supercar, this thing has managed to captivate many race game YouTubers over the last few months. You've seen its strength, and its legacy shows no signs of stopping. I'm of course talking about the Giga Chino. Alright Dove, now please demonstrate to your audience just how great of an automobile this tiny thing can be. It had low horsepower at the moment, but it could carry very nice momentum through the corners. Kind of like another car from another video I used. The Giga Chino goes through the pack with not much issue and it easily secures the lead, winning the first race of this challenge. Grand Valley was off to an interesting start. Oh wow, they're already zooming. <laughs> Yeah, might need a little bit of upgrades, just just a little bit. <laughs> While it did lag the straight line speeds, these K cars are just tremendous with their cornering capabilities. However, this car needed a little bit more power, so I bought a racing filter, turbo, and ECU tuning, and that hopefully should make it slightly faster. But even with all that, the car was still lacking top speed, so Sunday Cup was at a halt for now. I spent the remaining cash on an exhaust upgrade, and I needed more cash for better upgrades, so I sent the Giga Chino to the K-Cup, and that was a quick and easy run, and I got the Suzuki Wagon. Now with a lot more funding, I went back for more upgrades. Sadly though, some upgrades, despite being expensive, were barely an improvement. I only managed to find this upgrade that wasn't that expensive, putting it at 101 horsepower, and it also weighed 690 kg. Third time's the charm. Does the Giga Chino stand a chance now? It had a better start than before and it just comfortably slides into the lead. My opponents weren't too happy with that though. Oh man, <laughs> already playing the blocking game. Man. But with another lap, it had a slightly bigger lead and it takes the win here, leaving us only to visit Tsukuba, which is one of those tracks that the AI is very slow at with each corner, so it was pretty simple to get into the lead. The reward is not a pink vid, Sally, so off you go, Lud. I was curious if any cars fit our current budget, but most decent cars range from 25 to 40k credits, so I had to continue driving with the Giga Chino for a bit. Another cup done and dusted, giving me a lot of credits and a game crash. I think the emulator died. Aww. It was going so well! Thankfully, it counted the race, so I didn't need to redo it. The reward car gave a nice bunch of credits, so with that, I went ahead and bought a new car, which is a 300ZX. Mainly because it has a lot of power and it's FR, so I can do the competition there, and some other ones in the amateur league. The FR Cup has some quick cars in here. Without any upgrades at the moment, it comfortably gets into the lead quite early and stays there for the remainder of the race. And the same goes for the other two races. A pretty good start for the new car, giving us our very first premium car of this run. Up next, the 300GX takes a trip to the Clubman Cup, which honestly as well just goes by really quick. The AI here is a bit weaker compared to the previous game, so that could attribute to it as well. Next up, the French finally get their machinery shown for a bit. If you know, you know. <laughs> it fits in for the Euro Hot Hatch event, which it cruises by easily, followed up by the French competition, and even here, the AI wasn't really fighting at all. The Clio just leaves them in the dust, really. I checked the classic muscle car event, after this. My original idea was to use this Stingray here, but the emulator did not like that choice. So plans changed a little bit. I think it should be alright still, except maybe one car. Tempest Le Mans car, that's gonna be the issue here. Cause that car can go way above 200. Already reached top speed in this thing, man. And it only has four gears. <laughs> Gotta love muscle cars, man. We're gonna need a little bit of strategy to keep up with the AI. <laughs> 
Jeez, this thing is so fast. Look at that, man. Uh, just give me the transmission upgrade. Like, I can't do shit. I'm a sick, sitting duck. Like, I have to force my way into P1. Dude, we have to survive three laps like this. <laughs> if I can't have Corvette, no one else can have them. Dude, look at this. No! Why are we still here? Just to suffer. And the 350R is uh, in second place. That car is really fast. Dude, it hurts me, man. The top speed, it hurts. Ah, uh, just let me change it. Look at this, man. Yeah, this is Monza, man. The temple of speed. It's the temple of blockage. It's, just, it's not that it just has four gears. It's just where it limits the top speed. That's the real issue. I might have to let them overtake me here. There's no other alternative. I don't want Naj Binala again. But I guess I'll just let them through. Okay, I said one. Not everyone. <laughs> Well, we can, however, do that. I think that's the best I can do, man. Now I just have to hope. <laughs> hope for the rest. Come on. Just a little bit more. A little bit more. <laughs> so fucking close. This is where the reward cars were proving to be useless as this special big was not special at all. <laughs> this cannot be sold. Not even a single dime out of this thing, man. Ah, whatever. This challenger could also be used in the Supercar Nostalgia Cup, but the problem is the main rivals here are Ferraris and Lamborghinis, so this thing needed another gear and more power. Now making my way to second place wasn't difficult. This part, however, definitely was. Only thing I could really hope for is to catch him in the final sector. By the end of the first lap, I had caught its slipstream and sent it for first place. The Lambos were tough, but kept it steady for a win here. Suzuka was gonna be the real challenge. With a shaky start, I made quick progress getting into fourth around this twisty section. One Lambo gives an opening and I snatch it. Now only two cars remain, getting close to the Ferrari and sending it like Sergio Perez wanted, but instead of having skill issues, I get the job done. Now the main rival left is just leaving me in the dust. However, I had a cheap strat planned out. Now I know this isn't the best overtake, but even with that, this Lambo was glued to me. It had such a small lead, but still it takes its second win, leaving Laguna Seca as the final track, which compared to Suzuka was a lot easier. I managed to get into the lead by the corkscrew part in the first lap, and with that, this cup is done as well. Right after that, the 300ZX did the Japanese 80s festival without any hassle. Now I needed some extra cash for the next purchase that I'll do, and since I don't need a challenger, it can go to another owner making way for this c6 corvette now why this car exactly because this car had a lot of power and it's one of the few that has the option to fully turn it into a race spec car which could be crucial later on for now we visit the man the myth the machine gt guy for an oil change it easily smoked everybody in the muscle car championship the supercar festival which gave me a maserati that was actually premium letting me do festival italia as well gt world in this game isn't like the previous games here less races and weaker AI really. They do rock some nice looking cars though, so the only change I made was adding racing mediums for more grip. And after that, it was done and dusted really. I really wish the AI was more intense in here, but it is what it is. But it did give me an interesting car. There was only one problem with it though. So we get a Veyron. Let's see how it is. Oh ho ho, okay, okay. Actually never driven a Bugatti in this game. Huh? Oh, that's Bugatti standards. Are you serious? <laughs> I don't get a penny out of the fucking Bugatti. Not even a single fucking penny, man. And here I was thinking it was a fucking premium car, man. How is a Bugatti a standard car? I, I, I don't fucking get that. How, how is the Bugatti standard? <laughs> like, Bugatti is literally screaming, you know, interior luxury in that bullshit. <laughs> Damn PSP model. Fuck you, PSP. <laughs> Never touching GT PSP ever again, but <laughs> Yeah, this Bugatti is ported over from the PSP GT game. So it gets sold for nothing. And some random person out there has gotten the free Bugatti. Only eight more levels till Dream Car Championship, so I still have work to do. The Corvette at this point can challenge most competitions. And it goes and wins the tuning car one. Afterwards, I needed a car for the All Japan Championship, so I picked up this R32 which after proper care is pushed over to 500 horsepower. However, I wanted to do a slight test run in the Turbo Cup just to see how it runs. 
I think it's safe to say I went a little bit overboard with the upgrades here. With all the events I've done, my bank account was looking pretty good, so it was time to commence with the major upgrade plan. This thing was souped up properly with upgrades and it was going to be the main car for all the other competitions. A proper test would be GT All-Stars which has a lot of Group C cars in there, but how is our car going to be against them? I will pray that the Americans have blessed us. Oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit! Okay, uh, I'm using this Corvette. Oh, mamma mia, this thing. This thing, ladies and gentlemen. It is certainly mean. I think this is well equipped for Dream Car Championship, if I'm being honest. As you can see, it's quite powerful. However, it wasn't going to dominate like the RB19 that easily. Grand Valley proved to be tricky with the Bentley ahead of me, as I just wasn't gaining any time, mainly due to my skill issues. I finally managed to catch up on lap 4 and get an overtake around the outside for the lead. On the Nordschleife, an Audi managed to slow down the Bentley, so thank you Audi. Very cool. The copering was alright till this happened. See, this is why it's the copering! This is why it's called like that. Jesus, their straight line speed is insane. Actually, back in first, though. Know. Did not expect that, to be honest. <laughs> I did whatever else I could to get level 24, and finally, Dream Car Championship was unlocked, where the biggest rival would be a Jaguar XJR9. Kinda wanna see how this thing faces off against the Jaguar off. It has to be in first place, like, come on, man. <laughs> if it's in the back, okay, I'll take that. But all the way in the front? Nah. <laughs> Again in first place? Are you fucking kidding me, man? <laughs> the game certainly wants it there. Okay, fine. Let's just see how it is. <laughs> But that thing is just gonna fly off, man. I already know that. And I can already see it flying, man. We're actually... Mm. We're actually keeping up, though, man. We can actually compete against this thing. Okay, we have a little bit of a gap now. But he's gonna pull back instantly. Look at that, guys. We can get a bit of a gap around the corners, but it's just on the long straight he catches up. I think he's gonna be more challenging in Monza. Monza is literally Temple of Speed. <laughs> The Jaguar was a strong opponent, only being a few seconds behind me. Going into the next track, I forgot one crucial detail. The Temple of Speed. Now, how are you going to be around here? Hey, wait, isn't it? Oh, shit. I think it's gonna be raining. Yes, it's raining. Fuck, I don't have rain tires. <laughs> no. <laughs> None of the opponents also have rain tires, so they're gonna be pitting, that's for sure. <laughs> Fuck it, man. We're going with slicks. <laughs> You have to buy the intermediates, man. You have to buy the wet tires. Just maybe we can form enough of a gap. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just gonna hope we can do that. <laughs> as long as they stay in the pits, I should be all right. It won't be that bad, right, Sam? <laughs> oh, oh, no! I know I said I won corner cut, but god damn it, man. <laughs> I need any advantage I can take. <laughs> the FIA is sleeping. Actually, no, FIA is in Austria right now. <laughs> FIA is busy with track limits in Austria right now. They they won't mind a little bit of cutting here and there. You know what? I'll try and take the corner properly this time just to see how far ahead I am. I gained time. And there was no corner cutting, man. I'm on fucking slicks. <laughs> Good so GT AI sucks. Local Corvette beats Intermediate Grandma. <laughs> what a headline. Hey, actually, AI gained a little bit, okay? They gained six tenths. Now they just need to gain another 59 seconds. I think they can do it. Even though there's two laps left, I am very confident that they can gain 20, that's 59 seconds. Even on the wrong set of tires, the Corvette was over a minute ahead of everyone. The next race was in Tokyo, and for some reason, the AI was very slow here. Why is the XGR so slow? Like, this thing should be pushing a lot more. Show us what you're made of. You're a Group C car, for fuck's sake. <laughs> How about new? Why are you pitting? <laughs> I want my competition, man. <laughs> I'm waiting for a minute. I am not moving, man. I'm fucking waiting for a minute. I am getting my challenge. I don't give a shit, man, if I'm in first place, man. I want some excitement out of this event. <laughs> oh, this fucking AI, man. <laughs> I forgot the tires do carry over, so he was on rain tires. That's why he was so slow. Let's see how you're doing now, buddy. There you go. There's the grip. There's the speed. That's what I'm looking forward to. Is he actually on slick tires, man? I, I don't know. <laughs> this is just... 
Too slow for a Group C car. <laughs> the XGR has more power than my car. Somehow, somehow I'm keeping up with it. <laughs> yeah, I'm literally babysitting. I want to aim the push, man. <laughs> Like, do I need to give myself a handicap or something? Should, should I have gone into the pits? <laughs> then try and chase him down? You know what? Fuck it. We're gonna do that, okay? We're gonna, just gonna get a fresh set of uh, medium tires. See what happens. I feel confident I can finish second at least. Okay. Oh! <laughs> Thank you. 18 what? Just from one corner getting one second one. I know we're in a fresh set of tires, but sheesh, man. 14, are you serious? I gained five seconds on that lap. They should have honestly just put a shit ton of Group C cars here. It would have been, that would have been much more interesting than these cars, I guess. At least more competitive. There's my trusty, trusty buddy right there. But even with a pit stop, man, we were able to catch up. I guess four laps? Four or five laps. Even with my own Ferrari strategy calls, it was still an easy victory for the Corvette, completing the entire championship and finishing this run. When I went ahead to try this idea out, I really thought with the limitations I put for myself that it would be trickier, but they really made the AI so simple in this game that most of these events just went by pretty quickly. If only they had the aggressiveness like GT3 or GT4's AI, that would have made it a lot better, but it is what it is, and I hope this was fun to watch for you as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you lads in the next one.